an exhibit like this is not going to come along again anytime soon, if ever. Not since China or Tutankhamun visited our city have we brought something here that's so meaningful. It's an amazing, I would say, once in a lifetime opportunity. On September 23, 2006, Pacific Science Center brings Discovering the Dead Sea Scrolls to Seattle for a 105-day run. It's taking history and taking these artifacts and creating an exhibit around them that's meaningful, that offers clarity and really gives people something to think about, is what people will experience when they come see the Dead Sea Scrolls at Pacific Science Center. These scrolls are highly symbolic of, of uh, a wonderful connection to our past and a wonderful sense of faith in our future. They're really the, the relic of humankind. They're, they're everybody's uh, manuscripts. They're really uh, something that point back to an important moment in history. It's just changed completely the understanding of the Bible, essentially. And we didn't have any idea that these existed. In 1947, in the Judean desert near the northwest shore of the Dead Sea, an accidental discovery leads to one of history's greatest finds. We're going to know a hundred times more about the background in Judaism of the New Testament than we ever dreamed we would. Near the ancient community of Qumran, in caves long hidden and undisturbed for 2,000 years, numerous artifacts from an ancient civilization are found. Among them are jars containing scrolls written on parchment priceless documents written a little before and during the time of Christ. What makes this time so critical is that it really is the moment in which modern Judaism as it is today and Christianity emerged. It's the period from which they were born. They contain a, a variety of different manuscripts and essentially one section of them are biblical manuscripts, the oldest versions of biblical manuscripts we have. Uh, another are texts that we do not have in the Bible. The oldest text of the Hebrew Scriptures of the, old, of the Bible, the Old Testament part of the Bible, the oldest text we had of that was a thousand years later than the ones that were discovered at Qumran and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And yet what's remarkable about that is when you compare the two, there are some differences here and there, there are updatings of spellings and this sort of thing, but in terms of the biblical manuscripts, they're very, very close, which is remarkable in and of itself. The first scrolls found in the caves come into the possession of scholars and antiquities dealers. Four of the scrolls are even offered for sale in a Wall Street Journal ad. The scrolls are purchased for $250,000 and returned to Israel. Late spring saw the return to Israel of four more of the ancient holy scrolls found by shepherds in a cave at the edge of the Dead Sea. Ranging in size from tiny shreds to documents more than 25 feet in length, tens of thousands of scroll fragments are found in 11 different caves. You know, we're talking some of these manuscripts are, are very, very tiny, and to piece that material together is painstaking. Because they are so fragile, because they are almost as ethereal as smoke, we need to be very cautious with how we, how we handle them, how they're treated, how they're cared for. The Discovering the Dead Sea Scrolls exhibit at Pacific Science Center will show how modern science plays an integral role in the preservation and study of the scrolls. It will be an opportunity for people to see how DNA technology is being applied to understanding how to reassemble the tens of thousands of fragments of parchment that have not yet been put together. A small snippet of parchment that comes from an animal skin can, has its own DNA signature and matching those signatures tells us which pieces from the puzzle belong on the same puzzle table. It's thanks to modern science and technology that the scrolls can be taken out of protective storage in Israel and displayed. They have to be kept in special cases in which we control the temperature plus or minus two degrees, we control the humidity plus or minus two points, and most importantly, we control the light. The scrolls can only have a certain number of lumen hours of light before they have to go back into their dark, cold storage in Israel. Beyond the scientific applications, the exhibit will touch people in ways that are profound. 
I think that it's one of those kind of things that you can point to your children and your children's children. Yes, I am part of this. And because I am part of this, I'm creating a better understanding between all of us who have our separate but devout beliefs. We have no doubt that it will show how close the three faiths to each other. We, uh, we believe in, 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 uh, in the same God, we believe in the same books, and uh, we must share the same common roots. Most of us will go through our lives and never come close to something this old, um, yet connected to, to our life right now. You look at the documents and you say, these were written 2,000 years ago. You think about how those documents were written and you begin to feel history because you're looking right at it. And sort of it's kind of like we walk on sacred ground when we are in their presence and few of us have had the opportunity to actually see the original words from which our religion was created and these are some of those original words. Discovering the Dead Sea Scrolls provides visitors a hands-on interactive expedition through history and science associated with the scrolls' excavation, preservation, and translation. The exhibit culminates with the Gallery of the Scrolls. It's an experience that will bring together people of all faiths, beliefs, and interests. They cross boundaries between Judaism and Christianity. They, they cross boundaries between people who are religious and people who are simply interested in, in history. So I think the more we know, the more we can live in peace together. And by seeing the exhibit, it's a knowledge, it's information, which could defeat ignorance and bring people together. We take for granted that these ideas, these principles are always going to be around. Um, I think if we exhibit it, if we demonstrated the same kind of care for our principles and values and how they are preserved for future generations, as did the community of the Dead Sea Scrolls, we certainly would be doing a great service and providing a great benefit to future generations.